What's going on all of my healthcare brothers and sisters? I hope that you are having a wonderful day. We are helping you pass your NCLEX and nursing school exams like a boss. And today we're gonna to be talking about base excess and base deficit when it comes to our ABGs. Let's get our nurse on. So what is base excess and base deficit? Well, base excess is the amount of acid required to restore a liter of blood to its normal pH. So if it increases, we have metabolic alkalosis because of all of that extra base, whereas if it decreases, we know we have metabolic acidosis because we're deficient in that base, right? So we really can use our anion gap to compare and help us determine what's going on with our metabolic acidosis. So if our anion gap is present, then it proves that we have too much acid in our blood. Whereas if we have no ion gap, no discrepancies with it, then that could potentially mean that we have a loss of base within our blood. So it's really a very strong indicator when it comes to metabolic acid base balance. Whereas with our acid deficit, or I should say our base deficit, that means we have an excess of acid. We don't have enough base, so we have a deficit. So a normal value for our base um, values is going to be between negative two to positive two milliequivalents per liter. So if we have a more negative value, that means we're having some kind of base deficit, whereas if we have a more positive value, then we really have a base excess. And this value will help us determine how we're going to treat our metabolic patients. So the big question is, is base excess and base deficit reliable? Well, base excess is not always reliable when the following conditions are present. So when we have a patient that has kidney failure, many patients tend to have chronic metabolic alkalosis. Base excess may always be high. If the base excess drops from a higher number such as four, to zero, while this number is normal and it falls within the normal range, it may mean something is happening in the patient that could be serious. So when we're looking at these patients, we have to look at the overall big picture. Just because something is normal and it falls within a normal limit doesn't mean that's good. So with our renal patients, if they're normally, if they normally have a base of four and now they're zero, that's a major drop and that's something that we have to address. When it comes to our COPD patients, many patients tend to have chronic respiratory acidosis, right? So base excess may be very low or even negative. Negative base excess may not necessarily mean sepsis. So again, you have to look at that overall big picture and you wanna always follow the follow the trends to determine what the true changes really are. Because even though they might fall back into normal, that might not be their normal, especially for our COBD patients. We were talking about CO2 before. They might have a normal CO2 of 50. If we drop them to 40, even though that's normal, that's not good. They're CO2 retainers and we've just taken that away from them. So always follow the trends to determine really what the true changes are and make sure that you're looking at the overall big picture and not basing treatment based on one particular lab value. I hope that this video was helpful in helping pass your arterial blood gas, nursing school exams, as well as your NCLEX like a boss. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you subscribe here to my YouTube and hit that notification bell so that way you're informed every time I post a new video. You can also follow me on my social media. I am on Facebook and Instagram and make sure that you check out my website at www.nursechung.com. There I'm going to have NCLEX style questions, resources, handouts, everything you need to pass those exams like a boss. But until next time, I hope that you're having a wonderful day and I will see you all again soon. Bye.